well you are about to see the paper way of working out where the centre of gravity is on a wing. So let's get two pieces of paper. Now there's a big calculation you can use to work out where your centre of gravity is. And that's not what I've got paper for. What I've got paper for is to make two strips This is in case I muck it up. I'll show you on this wing so my hand doesn't get in the way. And then what we do, we come down and we mark the trailing edge of the wing. like that. So all this is surplus, we don't actually need that. Now what I'm going to do is fold to that trailing edge. Where I put that mark and then fold again to the trailing edge where I put that mark. So I end up with one, two, three, four. So this is where the trailing edge is here, along there. End up with four sections, and these are 0.25 or a quarter markings. And you could apply that straight back to the plane, and then put your mark on for the forward point of the centre of gravity. That happens to fall on that hole there. This hole here, which is one, two, three, four, five of my popper dots. It's the sixth popper dot back. The instructions say it should be 40 millimetres from the leading edge. So I've got my rule, I'm going to make a measure, and that is 40 millimetres from the leading edge of the CFG is, and that's using the 0.25. Now that's the forward CFG. How much have I got to play with? Well, believe it or not, you do the same thing. You put a piece of paper on your leading edge, and you mark where the trailing edge is. Now I happen to know this is correct, so all I'm going to do Let's put that piece of paper there. This isn't... Uh, put that piece of paper there. It's important to be as accurate as you can with this. Especially on small wings. So this is the same piece of paper as this. It's the same length. Put it up there, bring it down to my cord, my wing size at the root. Don't worry about taper. Now this you fold in three. Now the easiest way to do that, you can eyeball it if you like. But it's not going to be 100% accurate. Or you just measure that distance and divide by three. So I measure this piece of paper, it is 17 centimetres, 170 millimetres. So if I take 170, divide it by 3, I get 5.66 recurring. So what I've done in this case, I've marked out 5.6. I should have marked out 5.66, but I just marked out 5.6. So this is one third of cord or one third of the wing. Use those lines as a rough guide and just fold the piece of paper. And if you're a little forward it doesn't matter. Like that, so that's one fold. Just want to get rid of this bad tear I did. Let's get rid of that, I don't need that. So that's one fold. Then we get our other fold. And 
and I'm going to put it back in the same place on the wing. Right, it's along the wing leading edge from the same point. Okay, and this now comes down to just between this panel line and this dot. And then our third of the wing in the same place. So you've got five millimetres to play with. You can go from 40 to 45 for the CMG for this. 45 is the furthest most point you can go. After that you're tail heavy. So if you set the CMG at 40, which is 0.25 or a quarter of the wing length, and the wing length is known as cord, so it's a quarter of the cord. If you have less than that, so if your centre of gravity is 38, then you're nose heavy. So coming back, we can go up to 45, which is a third of the cord. And if you go beyond that, you then start to get tail heavy. And you do not want to run or fly a tail heavy plane. Because it won't be until you're actually in the air that you'll see how horrendous and difficult it is. It will be oversensitive to pitch. It will wobble its wings around as though it's about to stall on you, tip stall on you. It will stick its nose up in the air. Bad news all round. Quick, easy method to calculate where your CMG is. And it's interesting because looking at this, the thickest part of the wing is just in front of this panel line. So I wasn't far off that. Yeah. I'm happy that the manual is correct. Those of you who are interested, I can leave the calculation method. And good luck with that, because this works. Alright. That's probably killed enough time. Take a look and see where we are. Beautiful. I did make one mistake. I took off too much paint on this side. Fortunately, the push rod gets in the way of it. I might be able to find a dark green paint just to touch that up. I'm a bit annoyed with that. I was a bit overzealous with that one. Right, now we're going to put the wings on. We need a Y lead, which they supply, and that will connect onto our ailerons. Just make sure you get the signal where the signal is. This is the type that clips in. I've never used these before. Well, it just clips it in place, so that's not going to come apart. It's really nice. There's another one here, you've got to make sure, just make sure you get your signal here, with the signal there. Nice. Oh, they're quite tight. Those holes themselves are quite tight. Mm. Make sure we get those straight. Let's get these down. Take a look at it because it's basically put together now. Oh, it does look nice, doesn't it? 